Hi everyone, I am Maria and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to be reviewing slash recommending some science slash marine related books. Last year around Christmas I did a marine related books recommendation video. A lot of people liked it. Until today I still get messages of people asking me for more recommendations. So I thought, why not make this a Christmas tradition? These are all non-fiction books and they are all related to either science or the ocean in some way. Let's start. The books are in no specific order. It's going to be random. The first book I want to talk to you about is The Soul of an Octopus by Simon Montgomery. Simon Montgomery is a naturalist and also obviously an author and in this book she basically tells us the story of her own journey while exploring the mind and biology and ecology of octopuses. And we focus mostly on octopuses that she meets in the New England Aquarium. I have to say I went into the book expecting a bit more of a scientific type of book. I was expecting to learn more about the science behind what is known about the consciousness and intelligence of octopuses. Even though we do get a grasp of it on this book, she does explain to us a little bit of what is already known, some experiments that have been done, what she witnesses herself while interacting with the animals. There's a lot of life in this book as well because we also follow her own thoughts and experiences and also the her own interaction with the people who are in the aquarium and other people that she meets along the way. So even though we do learn a lot about the animals, which I really, really enjoyed, I love octopus. It did take me a bit to get into it. However, I did end up enjoying it quite a lot, much more than I thought I would when I read the first couple of chapters. Simon Montgomery does a great job in explaining how she feels when interacting with these animals and it, I kind of could relate to it. It's this kind of overwhelming feeling when you are in the presence of something grand and nature, mountains, the ocean, whatever, things that somehow just take your breath away. Feelings that you just cannot put into words. And she does that really nicely in this book. If you like octopuses and you want to learn a bit more about their behavior, their ecology and their biology, and also at the same time, feel understood by someone who also feels the same love for them as you do, then I definitely recommend this book. This edition, I don't know if all of them have this. They have really nice photos on in the, in, can you see, is it, is it focused? Really nice photos uh, of the octopuses she interacts with and the ones she sees when she's going diving. Also, there's this little look. So that, that's it. The next book on my pile of books is Marine Biology, a very short introduction by Philip Mladenov and it's very small as you can see. It talks a bit about currents in the beginning and then it starts obviously diving into biology, hence marine biology. Basically you learn about coral reefs, polar regions, coastal systems, all kind of systems from a biological standpoint. And if you are interested in just Learning a little bit about the ocean, having some general notions of marine biology and what happens in marine ecosystems, then I really recommend you check out this book. It's very small, you can read it very fast. I think it's a good start for someone who has no clue where to look at it and they just want to learn something about the oceans or about marine biology and they just have no clue where to look at. This is a nice little book, I recommend it. The third book I want to talk to you guys about is The World is Blue, How Our Fate and the Oceans Are One by the one and only Sylvia Earle. Can you see it? It's super shiny, isn't it? I'm so sorry. This book talks about the relationship of man with the ocean. This book talks about fisheries, talks about climate change, talks about pollution, talks about aquaculture, it talks about ocean exploration. Basically, it talks about every interaction between man and ocean. I highly recommend people to read this. It's not necessarily a very happy book, but it is a book that calls our attention to how much endangered marine ecosystems are and were back then and still are now. And it really shows us that from since she wrote this book 2009 until now, not much has changed, which is kind of uh, worrying. If you care about the environment and hence uh, the human race itself, I would also highly recommend you read this book. So now the marine section is over and now let's pass to the non-marine books. Sapiens, A Brief History of Humankind by Yuval Noah Harari. 
I got this book. Makeup on my book. How do I start even explaining this book? I absolutely loved this book. I went into it with relatively high expectations and that's never good. Usually when I go to something with high expectations, I, it really, really rarely delivers. And this time it definitely delivered. This book talks about Homo sapiens, uh, humankind, our species, since it exists. I feel like a new world has been opened. A new, I have entered a world that I have not known of thoughts and things. I feel so much smarter yet I feel like I know so much less. <laughs> what the hell? Even though this is an historical book, it is a page turner. I usually take a long time to read nonfiction books and I just flew through this book. There were points where I felt like the chapters finished in cliffhangers and I was like, I have to know what happens to humankind. Oh wait, it really felt like you were re reading some kind of a historical thriller and you had no clue what was gonna happen next. In this book, he talks about everything controversial, race, equality, human rights, politics, religion, and so on, so on, so forth. However, the way he gives explanation to things is like, you know? I, I, I have no words even, I don't even have words. The way I see this book is if, as if an alien, who an historian alien would come to earth and analyze human behavior. And while doing so, really analyzing why things happen how they did and why they happen, why they are happening now and why do we act in certain ways. And in the way he does it, he opens your mind to so many different perspectives on certain things that you never thought, that you just didn't think of. Another thing that I really found interesting in this book is that it made me feel very uncomfortable. I really felt challenged and I loved it. I'm not sure I'm making any sense, but this book is incredible. Every homo sapiens should read it. Offer it to yourself as a Christmas gift or to someone as a Christmas gift, or I don't know, read it. Last but not least, the book I want to talk to you about is Women in Science, written and illustrated by Rachel Ignotowski. This book is just beautiful. Beautiful physically, outside, it shines a bit even, and the illustrations are just incredible. I simply love this. This book talks about 50 fearless pioneers who changed the world women pioneers. It talks about the most important women in science throughout history. I think targeted to younger audiences, but I'm an adult, I'm 29, and I ate this up, and I loved it. Even though the writing is simple enough for younger audiences to understand, it is not, it doesn't dumb you down, and you can still learn a lot. I definitely did. For each scientist, you have two pages. On the one page, you have an illustration of the lady and with all little props related to whatever it is she was studying or she was doing. Then you have like little quotes explaining if you are lazy to read this incredible big long text. You can just read this short little things and you can get already understand why she was important and what she did. But then on the right side, you have a text explaining her life, her achievements, and in some situations, her struggles. Because until very recently, science was a world for men, and many of these women had to live in it and had to fight a lot to be allowed to live in it. Not only I've learned a lot and from a his science history standpoint, this is a beautiful book. It's aesthetically beautiful, and it's also an amazing way to celebrate women that fought for the right of doing science and who did science regardless of what other people thought they could or couldn't do. If you like science and if you like to learn about the people who do science, this is definitely a book for you. Regardless of whether it's women or not, it's just about incredible scientists who did incredible things and we should just celebrate them. This was all people, I hope you enjoyed this video. Like this video if you enjoyed it and share it around if you feel like doing that. If you have any further questions, if you have some recommendations for me and for everyone around, please leave it down in the description box below. Let me know if you read any of these books and if you like them or if you didn't. And if you haven't read them and you will, 
read them and then come back and let me know what you thought about them. Thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you in the next video.